Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pimlico Racecourse. Naomi Tucker joined by Keith Fusel. Keith, we're just kind of schmoozing away on that yes. music, uh, getting a little bit of energy going yes. for that, you know, five stakes card coming up. Absolutely. Big five stakes on today's card. And uh, Trish, again, and Trish and the whole racing office, Trish Bowman, our stakes coordinator, did a great job. Fortunately, we lost a couple are coming off the turf, the sprints, due to the, all the rain we had in the area. But we're going to get the other ones on there. There's route race. I'm looking forward to the mile and a half on the grass. You don't see that too often here. But, uh, yeah, great card. Uh, I, I like a couple of horses on this afternoon's card. Let's try to make some money. Yeah, the searching stakes kicks off mm -hmm. the stakes action here in race number four. Indeed, a mile and a half yes. on the turf. I, you know, the European in me is yes. relishing mm -hmm. that distance. So very much looking forward to that. And indeed, we five stakes coming up. Two of them will be on the turf. The three other ones will be on the main track. And very much looking forward to it. But, mm -hmm. of course, the Rainbow Pick 6 yes. did not go out yesterday. We have over a million dollars in the carryover. Starts in race number five here. We have ten races on the card meaning Rainbow Pick 6 starts in race 5, not race 4, not race 3, like some other days is mm -hmm. the case. Make a note of that, and we have 4 out of 5 stakes races included in that Rainbow Pick 6 sequence, so make sure to get on board, and Keith and I hopefully are going to guide you sure. in the right direction, and as I was talking about the summer stakes, 5 stakes races, the sprint races, the, the turf sprint races have come off and will be held on mm -hmm. the main course, but as we said, the, t the long races on turf are still very much alive, and some classic see horses uh, coming up from Fairhill and, and all over the place. So much to look forward to, really. Absolutely, absolutely. I know one person, I guess, is not upset that Sprint came off. John Robb with Street Loot, right? I know they were looking <laughs> forward to trying uh, her mm -hmm. on the grass, but Dirt, yeah, they, they're probably licking their chops right now, so we'll see. I mean, I, I spoke with Xavier Perez, mm -hmm. uh, was it two days ago, and he said he was hoping that perhaps they'd be on the main track for that Maybe. last uh, yeah. stakes race, because indeed uh, uh, Street Loot would love love to get back on the main track mm -hmm. sprinting against perhaps a bit of a softer group than she's seen in her last well, couple so looking forward to hopefully seeing her back in the winner's circle she's one of my favorite fillies five eighths of a mile and there's some quick quick fillies in there that'll be an interesting little race yeah very, yeah mm -hmm. definitely can't wait to see her but of course we have a, a couple of other favorites coming back anna's bandit yes. hello beautiful mm -hmm. chub wagon trying to oh. remain on the feet in that shiny against eggs so that's all coming up let's have a look at the current track conditions mm -hmm. the main track is fast and the turf is good 
absolutely gorgeous day out here right now. A little breeze, 75 degrees. You couldn't ask for much. You know, the humidity is down. The rain is out of the area. So looking forward to this card. Yeah, the turf course, good. We're going to monitor that situation. I'll, I'll give you guys a heads up if we kind of see anything different. We'll check with the track super and go from there. But uh, we'll start a good right now for that turf course. Yeah, happy to start with that. And indeed, mm -hmm. as you highlighted, ideal conditions uh, for oh, a so stakes day. So do you come up to Pimlico. Join us here mm -hmm. on site. It's supposed to be a lovely day. And, you know, you can have a drink, have some food, and place a couple of wages, soak up the sunshine on our apron. Uh, what's not to like? Uh, nothing at all. <laughs> Let's get going with this 10 race car. The first race of the day is six furlongs. Nickel claimer, of course, the start of the early pick. Five, 12%, mm -hmm. 12 to take out as usual. And uh, aside from the fact we have stakes action, we are kicking things off with a, a nickel claimer here. Nothing wrong with that at all. We see this uh, similarly here. Both yeah. of us landed on the number two company clown. To me, he is the horse that most likely is going to be the dominating pace mm -hmm. influence and just has run much better figures than anyone else in this field. Perhaps a little bit less strong feet than what he faced uh, two weeks ago and bested by three quarter lengths. Yeah, he got away with a very soft up front, 23 and 4, that opening quarter. Very pedestrian when you really break it down, but he had plenty left of the stretch. He should have, but he's worked his way through conditions. Very good form right now. And just looking at the rest of the field, there's nobody with any kind of real speed speed, it looks like, mm -hmm. to press him. So she should be comfortable again up front. He's what opens at one and he, I've got him lined at four to five. Yeah, he'll probably settle in around two to five, three to five, I think when it's all said. Then you have a price underneath you used the five lucky junior who should get away at an okay price. Yeah, Lucky Jr., if I look back at his start two starts back, mm -hmm. uh, he's n his best races have come when he's no more than five lengths off the base. Still made up a lot of mm -hmm. ground two starts back, so I'm thinking if they can have him a little bit closer today, mm -hmm. perhaps leaving himself with less to do, he might be able to get back in a winner's enclosure. Has, you know, has won a couple in his day, so just using him underneath, but to me, it really seems that company clown is the horse to beat in this field. You use the number four mm -hmm. Americano, pulled a 16 to one surprise two yes. starts back when winning against slightly weaker than perhaps this field is is coming up but he's looking yeah. to find that form again comes out of a fast race though last time out did ride the wave of the racetrack the inside was good that particular day but chase very quick fractures i don't know if he's going to have to work that hard early i think he can get set up shop maybe he's just stalking uh, company clown and just continue on and hold down the place at a square price for company clown and a little stat here for claudia and granted the horse is going to be awfully short but the last three years you're looking for maybe a bounce well he's eight for 19 that's 42 percent with these nickel kind of horses off of a top number oh yeah 42 percent so, yeah I'm ROI is still positive we're so not yeah. trying to beat that no. in the first race we are going to go with the chalk yeah. uh, i mean it makes sense to go with the short price favorite if you really don't see any other scenarios playing out it's tough it's it's tough to see anybody to get past him I, maybe the four like i say his two back race was good enough for me with the trouble and i think he can stay close enough we'll see yeah, race number two starts the early pick four. And as we've come accustomed to, Keith, you created a, an early pick mm -hmm. four ticket for us here. How do you play it? Yeah, we, we can probably let them off. Okay. Hey, I'm going to go on an $18 ticket. I think it might have gone down to 12 well, Let's add this up. Three times two is six. That's three. I thought there was a scratch. Anyhow, they must have filled something in. <laughs> Eight, nine, 14 is going to get you started. Now I got a text on a, on a horse <laughs> I thought I had scratch. We'll see. In race three, two deep with the three and the seven. We'll go three, five, seven in the fourth. Wrap it up in race five. Live and let live. Response time at 15 to one morning line will be my price I play. I saw that. Yeah, this horse, there's, there's plenty of speed in this race as well. I was impressed with the debut run on the main track. So there's your ticket, $18. Let's see if we can get a little price or two yeah. in. Yeah. Live and let live is my single in the uh -huh. rental pick six in that okay. first leg. I, I think this perfectly sets up for her. We'll talk about her mm -hmm. in race number five. First level allowance for Phillies and Mez, three-year-old and up. Going the one, the going, I was about to say the one turn mile. Going the <laughs> one mile on the turf course here. Uh, you can see it behind us. It's uh, currently in terrific condition. So happy that we're on it again. Mm -hmm. Both you and I take a little bit of interest in the number eight uh, out of sorts. Yes. I think there's plenty of pace for her here to set up. And she made her first ever turf start off the layoff mm -hmm. and that was quite a good effort she was very very far back but showed a terrific close which is exactly what i look for uh, with these route races on the grass it went awfully quick the internals that afternoon look that was pretty mistake 45 and three and sheldon was very very patient with her just let everything kind of develop was in the clear leaving the three eights and then had to kind of work through some traffic late made a big furious run looked like she might have got the bob at the wire 
didn't. Uh, Judy Blue Eyes got that decision. She came back to run okay on the dirt yesterday. But out of source, that was a very impressive turf debut. She's going to be a shorter price in here. I go with speed lane. I'm just going to toss the race in the hilltop. Bumped around at the break in a big field. Just never got interested. But I went back to some of those races. Keeneland Fairgrounds. Let's look at that fairgrounds race on March the 21st. Got Gam's Mission led that day. Just got beat late. That horse came back and, and I think won an allowance and, and took the grade three regret. Uh, she's run against quality horses. She showed very good patience, you know, with the ability to handle some traffic down at Kingland when breaking the maiden worked outside of horses. The final furlong closed well. Just a little bit better value. These two tough for me to separate, so I'm going to go with the value here with Speed Lane. Oh, you're setting me on speed lane mm -hmm. now here. I ended up using Serenade a Kitten in my exacta. Uh, she went, they went very fast early in that hilltop. As you highlighted, there was a mm -hmm. good pace there to run into. And she tired badly. She did a, a 131.19 time from US Pace for his own, wow. in those early sectionals and then just couldn't finish it off. Mm -hmm. If she gets allowed to just settle a little bit more and not be, you know, she was trying to stay close to mm -hmm. the lead. She was trying to stay close to mm -hmm. the pace. I don't think they're going to go that fast no. here today. No, I, I think she would be more comfortable with J.D. aboard. Yeah, I, I'm thinking maybe the other uh, Brittany Russell horse tries to go out front fresh. Adelaide Miss could bring some speed to the table and Serenade can set up in that stalking spot if things don't get that quick. And this turf going to have a little bit of give to it today uh, with a good surface. And what, what are your thoughts when there's a little bit more give to the ground? I like horses that don't come as far back. I want them within a couple of lengths, true, right? Like true. a it's grinding It's tough to style. make up ground yeah. when, when it's a little bit, you know, a little bit deeper because mm -hmm. it feels like you get sucked into it a little more. Yeah. So to really have that quick turnover and that acceleration can mm -hmm. be tricky. I am banking on it drying out a little bit. We haven't raced on it in a while, so I'm hoping yeah. it plays still a little bit evenly, okay. uh, allowing some of these close. But I'm hoping that some of these horses are going to sit closer in, yeah. in the way that the pace flow says. I think that's key. I mm -hmm. Is the pace going to be there or not? Because if it isn't, yeah. you have these out and out close they might going to sit within more reach, uh, maybe two lengths off it, mm -hmm. instead of being five lengths off it. And that can make a difference. Yes, no doubt. And I think Sheldon, without a sorts, if he wants to put her in the race a little sooner, just kind of going back and look at that video, had plenty of horse. So I, I think she's got the ability to, to lay a little bit closer against this field. They went very quick. They won't be going anywhere like that. What today. do we make of hightailing drawing in for mm -hmm. Shug McGay, Forrest Boy? She runs, comes in here, off a maiden special weight win right here, course and distance. Yeah, patiently handled. You know, this is a five-year-old's only made eight starts. But, you know, that barn and the owner, Sorcheny, they've c c combined for lots of wins, quality wins. We know you go down the line. But uh, hightailing, I like that race last time out. A couple races back in New York, good enough form, good enough horse. I'm sorry, Gulfstream with a belated run. I, after trouble, I, I'm going to use this horse right back into the mix. Yeah, I use her as well. I was mm -hmm. just looking at the connection. Indeed, I thought that was a, a good effort that showed improvement in, in her last outing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave her out nope. in case they come here with the upset, especially on the turf and especially no. just trying to figure out how it's playing. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure to include those uh, horses from these quality barns coming over. Race number three, Feliz and Mess, the three-year-old and up six furlong the distance, beaten nickel claimer. Mm -hmm. Do you know that you have a stat on your yeah. top selection here? The number seven, eight Oaks for trainer Carlos Mancia. I still think you might get a little bit of price on eight eight oaks maybe that three to one range i don't i think genie's angel is going to take plenty of play here for for dale cap but i came up with this stat carlos mancia the last two years four for 15 27 percent seven for 15 in the money with the dirt sprints third off of a layoff good roi 336 and eight eight oaks against the bias on the 29th that was that sloppy seal track it was down inside it really just kind of you know, trying to make up ground. It was that, sir, that that part of the track was not where you wanted to be if you wanted to accelerate. But she kept grinding, uh, an improved number. I think there's enough speed in here. Shex and Jim, Sublimit, even Jeannie's Angel will be forward. Mm -hmm. She's got some speed to target. I think she can rally past. Yeah, I used Jeannie's Angel on top and an eight oaks underneath. I think okay. Jeannie's Angel, second start with Dell. She's going to be the dominant speed. She's cleared her mm -hmm. non to lifetime condition with ease last time out, winning by four. So I, I, I'm going to uh, get on board with her. Uh, at the same distance here, six furlongs uh, once again. We'll move on because we have 10 races yes, to go through. Yes. Let's start with the first stakes event on the card, the searching stakes, a mile and a half on the turf. I I'm looking forward to this one. And we see this uh, quite s very similarly no, here. Keith, uh, that, means, that means they're all going to come in in that, uh, in that order. Make sure to, to use our selections and get the super. Uh, luck money in here. Let's have a look at her win two starts back, which was at Belmont on a yielding mm. turf going a mile and a half. Now, that is 
tough. And she sat behind the leaders, but still did a fair bit of running. They didn't really hold back for the distance. Uh, time from US had the first three in turtles coded red, meaning for the class, for the distance, for the going, it was pretty fast. Uh, and that's really interesting. You know, yeah, and a <laughs> shorter field here today. We're talking about wanting to stay closer to the pace. Now, I know this race back in October had one more race after that, a reach maybe in the grade one. Uh, but yeah, this is a good run, a grinding run. And, and, and luck money, uh, from just off of it this day, I think it's going to be forward again. It's fresh. The works are good. And talk about a, a, a filly, I should say, that was just getting better and better. She made a huge improvement. You look at those numbers from a 72 to a 91, it just kept going. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... No fluke yeah, there. No, mm -hmm. and, and just keep... And, and held form after that. A little fresh. And you look at the workouts. The string of works are really, really good. So I think luck money. Michael Sanchez forwardly plays and just kind of dogs them down. I think this is your winner here in the searching. Yeah, I, I used it. Blame Debbie underneath. So do you. Uh, she's the grade three dowager winner over this distance. Uh, two starts back where she went to the lead and took them all the way. And I think that is key because mm -hmm. who really wants to be on the lead in this field? Is it going to be Blame Debbie? And is she going to try and run away with it again? Uh, probably. Uh, but I tell you, I, and the one thing that kind of gave me a little edge to luck money, I went back and paired those races at Kentucky Downs. Now, a little different course that day, and the pace flow can, can really determine a lot. But clearly a better number. They were just days apart on those races, right? September yeah. 9th, September 10th, same distance. That kind of got me over the top. They key up against Always Shopping, who's who kind of – and there was one other one, I think uh – the name is Gase Mulaney. Yeah, day, he didn't yeah. Win next out. And, and and there's another one, uh, the two back race at Belmont. That horse came back. Would have come on in second in the Sheep's Head Bay. So the key horses are there for these two. The scratch of beautiful lover, who I thought was going to be the one maybe up on the lead, but they're going to wait another day. So I think it's between these two. You're right, Naomi. Uh, perhaps one coming in here with a little bit more race fitness is the number for Crystal, mm -hmm. Cri Crystal, excuse me, mm -hmm. for John Kimmel. Because uh, these other fillies, we're talking about Blame Debbie has been away for nearly 200 days as well as Luck Money, 169 days. Are we going to see a filly with perhaps some more race fitness come in here and topple them three starts back over the mile and 716th? Not a distance you see <laughs> carded that frequently. Now, no. me being the European with the metric system, I had to recalculate that. And that's a half a furlong shy of a mile and a half. And she won over that. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, some of these other fillies, perhaps the more classier types. Right. But going over uh, good ground, a mile and a half, does require you to be in top condition. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's got the bottom underneath her, maybe that little bit of an edge. But I think these other ones, the five, they're working. The works are good. And turf, even at this distance, I'm not terribly, terribly concerned. And, and I think Cristal, albeit she's improved a little bit the last couple starts, she has to step up a little bit more against this kind of company, I think, and, sh and show me. So. Yep. Oh, great. There you go. Race number five, six furlongs on the main track for the three-year-old optional claimer, one other than. This is actually a race I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, of course, it is the start of the Rainbow Pick mm -hmm. Six as well. I nearly forget we'd have a million dollars already lying around waiting for you to scoop it off. One million and seven thousand four hundred thirty-four, and it's going to get bet today. What a mm -hmm. wonderful opportunity. I created a, a Rainbow Pick Six ticket, and I'm... I'm taking a risk here. I am singling in the first race of the sequence. Why? Because I think live and let live. The flow is going to set up for her. She has speed on her inside with Edie Mini Mighty Mo. Speed on her outside with Trip to Freedom. I think that those two, uh, perhaps even a couple of the others, might be more forwardly placed. Hitch your ride has been close to lead. And live and let live doesn't need any of that. She's going to sit behind them, bide her time, get past them, and absolutely kick clear. She's kept the right company. She ran second behind Malibu Beauty, who went on to win at an allowance level. Level sprinting next out. She best Paradise Song, who came back to win with first next out as well. 81 buyer. So I'm going with Live and Let Live as my single. And then in race six, I use the one, the two, and the eight here. The one hemp Ooh, is my top selection here. Sorry, I just got attacked by a cicada. <laughs> but hemp is my top selection in, in here. He interesting cutback, but I, I like it. He's he's a young horse. He's continuing to improve. Went against some out and out tough uh, stable mates in Mighty Mischief Jackson Traveler. I think this should be a little bit easier. But I do use the number two and the number eight as well. All these books good he's really wondering how he's going to be after that seven and a half month layoff race seven i used the four the six and the eight in that event the six is my top selection elusive 
Edge for Miguel Vera. Then in race number eight, I go four deep in the Prince George's County mile and an eighth on the turf. I use the one, the eight, the 11, and the 12. The one pixelate is my top selection, but I do fear the number 12 on the outside. Midnight tea time as well coming in here for Joe Sharp. Looking very, very good. Eight to one. I think that's wonderful yeah. value. That is a great betting race. I want to be spread mm -hmm. out in that race to hopefully get a price in for that rainbow pick six. And then in race nine, I use the one, the two, and the four. I am on the Chubb wagon, bandwagon here. Uh, she's undefeated and she's going to try and take them or try and do so again. She doesn't need the lead. There's some very fast fillies and mares in here. She might just sit behind them and, and come with a terrific close. And then in race 10, as we are on the main track, I'm going to go with one of my favorite fillies in the number 10, Street Loot. I do use the number six, Malibu Beauty, on the knee. She's been terrifically tough in her last couple of outings. $43.20. Partly because of my single in the first leg in race number five with Live and Let Live. Now, Keith, is that a good decision or am I am I going to get bust here on the first leg? You're taking the shot. I mean, I don't mind it. And then you'll come back if you if you whiff. You swing and miss. You come back and play the late pick five. But uh, to, to, to looking at these fields, I, you've got to spread. And she looks like a filly. Yeah, you know, she's got to escape a little trouble. She, she's the fastest right now. She's really kind of blossomed them of late, and she should sit just off of it and pounce, I would think, given a clean trip. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you've got to take your shots in there. You, you've made a management. Well, 43 is a good little structure. Take it. If somebody wants to add another horse in there, get a partner. Yeah, you can make it work. If you want to go too deep in yeah. the first leg, you come out at about $81 or, or something like yeah. that. I did calculate it earlier. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> 81.40, 81.60, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I am afraid of eating mini mining. Well, I see you don't have her that high in yeah. your selections but she might have hopped in that debut but uh -huh. she sprinted up after wow. one stride to the front kick clear professionally and in a talented manner i am worried about some of the pressure that maybe trip to freedom is gonna give her but uh, miguel vera this is an improving three-year-old that we've only seen once so mm -hmm. very unexposed make a note she does not get the blinkers no. on today did say that she was going to get the blinkers on i don't see you need to she was pretty decent yeah. uh, in her day be very professional i like the fact that they keep her as is and she was very quick after recovering up to contention gets the lead she was on the better part of the racetrack down around the two path to set the pace and widen you're looking at her breeding too you talked about maybe she doesn't need to lead i don't think so either by out of, of a mare called plum plum uh has had a couple of horses go longer i know the trombetta horse toy has been able to handle a She's mile a yeah, yeah yeah has been able to handle handle the distance so yeah i mean i can see the only thing i saw vet scratch there on the 22nd of may but she's come back and worked forward that could have been a little bit of hiccup so yeah she's a user for me response time who ran second to Edie Mini Mighty Mo in that debut run back in uh, April, April 23rd to be exact. I, I thought this horse overcame a ton of adversity, came on the worst part of the racetrack and rallied into it. You see some of these horses uh, for Hammy, the younger ones, they can improve quickly get that third fourth race under its belt uh, enough flow to set things up for this horse to be the price type that gets into your exacto i think that's a wonderful price but let's mm -hmm. quickly get back to live and let live because we do have a video of that last winning effort of her which was so tenacious mm -hmm. just taking over you can see there she's the only one that chases pretty laurie and then she takes over and not just a little bit no she swooshes past her with so much momentum yeah just under a light hole just the reins dangling ever so slightly and pretty laurie's a quick quick mm -hmm. Billy and she just kind of sat out outside of her with ease now the race prior she overcame a ton of a ton of adversity we saw that troubled first quarter and was dead game to the wire this was the clean trip that she got and boy she she that's a big jump in numbers but I like how Ricky gives the time a little bit of a break you see with with this kind of layoff he's about 30 percent with a positive ROI just kind of wrapped up late I mean she's she's in really good form right now and she gets the speed to target she truly is. Uh, stay with us for this brief break. We'll be back shortly. And they're off. She's second in the two path. Round on her two side. Great. And a quarter of a mile to go, and he's six on top. Last of the 12.
Welcome back to Pimlico Race Course. Five stakes races on offer. Ten races on the card. Plenty to get through. Naomi Tucker, Keith Few still here. And as Keith so pointedly highlighted, if you don't want a single in the Rainbow Pick Six, <laughs> this right. is, and you miss the Pick Five starts right here. Mm -hmm. Late Pick Five, twelve percent industry low takeout. And perhaps no million in the pot, but still a fun sequence to play, which includes four stakes races. Let's talk about the Ben's Cat Five Furlong Sprinting on the main track so this is one of the stakes event that will not be held on the turf and i landed on the number one hemp so i'm just going to talk about uh, him first mm -hmm. came out of that chick lang stakes and i thought that was a terrific run from him against a very tough mighty mischief jackson traveler both trained by hall of famer steve asmus both heavyweights for mm -hmm. their age uh, jackson traveler champion uh, maryland two-year-old i thought he did terrifically there he let the speedsters move forward sat back mm -hmm. still came with a run just a touch bit out class but if he can run back to something similar i think he's the improving yeah. sort in this field this time of year you get the improving three-year-olds you know hooking uh, the older ones and you, you know bill he's a huge fan of that my partner up there with echo base bill browsman does a great job um hemp yeah and the lasix goes back on so mm -hmm. hemp into that good good out of that good race the jackson traveler mighty mischief was on the better part of the racetrack was able to get position inside you wanted to be there that day worked out a trip and very willing to the wire behind some good horses but i I like oldies, but goodies. Fresh. You talked about the long layoff. Hasn't been seen since late October. Hey, why not, though? This this guy is fast when he's right. And the recent workout, mm -hmm. the bullet work might have him on edge. He's shown the ability to sit just off of it as well at these five, five and a half distances. I, I, I love his draw. I think he's a little quicker when right than hemp early. Let's see. If he's sharp so through that well. opening quarter, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get a gauge from Julian to see how he's sitting. Maybe, maybe mid-turn to the, to the head of the stretch. But uh, – he, when he's right, he's fast. And Air Token was going to be my top section. I just can he get up at five eighths of a mile. Uh, he he's he's. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to do with Air Token. Is he gun? Is this too short? Because a cut back from mm -hmm. the mile plus distances he's yeah. been running at. Do you, you know is five furlong too short for him? Yeah. But I just feel like he's so fit. He's mm -hmm. only going to go five furlongs. Maybe yeah. too fit. Maybe he's run too often. He's run back-to-back -back weeks, and then I think uh, just over two and a half weeks in between before that. Mm -hmm. But that last race was terrific. Yeah, he was just sitting there with a ton of horse, mm -hmm. J.D. I remember seeing him after, after the races that day. You see the short kind of boxed in, five sixteenths to three sixteenths. Like, yeah, I'm just looking for somewhere. I have plenty of horse. And, and he's a horse that's turned back before. Now he's won at seven eights and, and wore down yes. a, a really fast horse. Frank Atelli. So, yeah, I mean, he's probably going to be four or five out of it, turn it for home, maybe a little bit more. But uh, things get, you know, a little bit contested up front. He's going to be rolling late. Just might yeah. not be able to get up at 5 eights, but I'm not going to leave him out of my tickets. No, I, I mm -hmm. used all three of them. Yep. All these but goodies just don't know who we'll see today because seven and a half months is quite a while. But mm -hmm. that 47 flat work certainly means that he is yeah. ready to rustle, hustle, rustle, yeah. <laughs> hustle <laughs> one, uh, <laughs> once more here. But is the six year old, does he still yeah. have that blistering? Speed is my question mark now, making right. his six-year-old seasonal debut. So hence, I use him in third. Okay. If he would have had a one run under his belt, I probably would have used him on top. Gotcha. So that's just me taking a bit more of a conservative approach here. Race number seven is for Maiden Claimers, 40,000. Six furlong the distance here as well. Three, four, and five-year-olds. And Keith, you used the number one drive-by layover for trainer Hamilton mm -hmm. Smith. I looked at this horse. I saw you use him. Yeah. I guess I'm going against him just because he lacked a fair bit of speed there early, and I, I do like my horse to be more forwardly paced when it comes to this. Yeah, it was only a four-horse feel, but if you get back and watch through run the lead uh, strap get, didn't release out of the, the assistant starter's hand it was very awkward beginning for that horse yeah. he gave up a ton of ground but man the way he finished they protect him scratch him out of another race raises in here uh there's enough speed and but who knows he might bring mm -hmm. speed to the table you, you did yeah, not get a yeah. fair start last time i think race seven I, mean, I could go on and on about this race if you can i hate to say if you could afford an all in here use all do it i i th this race was inscrutable to me really really tough i i, I mean yep. I, I understand i ended up mm -hmm. using the, the number six elusive edge on top for miguel vera second after a long 302 days off and quite the race in that maiden 40s well he missed the kick he hustled and mm -hmm. and was used up quite a lot early to just kind of he was weaving through horses he was very aggressively ridden by jd he was like come on we're going to get position it was basically like yeah. going through traffic 
uh, going into that turn, takes plenty of kickback, doesn't stop, mm -hmm. dies for a gap on the race. Uh, overall, was a close finish, only yeah. beaten by a length and a half. So I liked that effort, perhaps a cleaner trip. It was a wild and wacky final three sixteenths <laughs> of a mile in that race because Jackie A in there as well had a little trouble early and then, uh, you know, moved up behind horses, had to find a way out, mm -hmm. got outside late, and one late brush just couldn't quite get yeah. up. Uh, he's an improving type off of that protect move, 16,000 in debut up to this kind of race next time out. I, I think he's primed for another good effort here for Corbett Callazo. you got a horse like Snow Job I just threw into the mix. You're looking at the bringing a, a half-brother to Speed Lane. Well, Speed Lane has shown the ability to handle the main track. I think it would pop maybe like a 70 on there. So that horse isn't really out of the question. Harbor Crossing, uh, you've got in the mix. I'll let you talk about him. Yeah, so Harbor Crossing, the first thing I did was uh, how, how come he's in here? He won by four and a quarter length. Mm. Apparently he was a medication positive, so he yeah. hasn't got that win just yet. But uh, very encouraging to see that he's clearly a, a precocious sort that was very dominant on debut. It was actually a tough race. He was between others on the lead early before dropping back slightly, mm -hmm. finding more before taking over. So it wasn't the easiest way mm -hmm. to break his maiden. And he did, but he didn't. So he's back yeah. in here again for, for another try as we'll move on to race number eight, the Prince George's County. Mile and an eighth on the turf. And both you and I use the inside horse, the number one pixelate yeah. in here. Same, I feel like he's coming up against a similar strength of field as he ran in the, yeah. the Henry Clark stakes where he looked like he had them. He was able to kind of swoop over, had a lot of momentum, went to the front, and then Corelli came up. And he tried to duel with him a little bit, but Corelli just got the nod mm -hmm. there. Yeah, a little bit of trouble. Uh, did we have video of that race or no? I do believe we do. Yeah, we should Can have we a video of that last race. Pixelate? Yeah, yeah that's what we yeah, got in a little bit of trouble uh, around the first turn. Just a, just a light steady one kind of going up uh, from behind horses. But ends up as the cicadas are... Out in full force, it looks I like. I had one in my mouth early when oh, I. Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> <And> <laughs> that wasn't and ideal either. And ends up here, uh, highlighting here the force, and it ends up making that wide move up to contention. Gets a short lead, but Corelli, just a little too good that day, is going to come rolling on the outside to get up. But I, 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 all in all, Pixelate, a great, great effort. You're going to get Joe Bravo today talking about the flow of the race. We talked about this the other day uh, when we saw who was going to be in this race. Just looks like he's got a slight edge. And you've got mm -hmm. that longer run here at a mile and an eighth on the turf course to get up into the first turn. But I think he's going to be able to hold position. Not much separating, slight advantage from the flow for him, and he can bring a finish at a mile and an eighth, no problem. Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid of midnight tea time. That eight mm -hmm. to one is great value. Yep. Uh, that was a tough race he came out of in the dinner party. Behind a decent enough pace, uh, was able to try and get down, set down, but some like it, Hot Brown had the jump on him mm -hmm. there. That wasn't an easy effort, so if he comes back in, in good shape, uh, he is drawn towards the outside, but I think he's just going to slot in and kind of sit behind them and, and bite his time and then come with that swooping move uh, mm -hmm. on the turn. I like him in that spot. Sheldon Russell, I spoke with him yesterday. He was saying, big day today. Big day. He is uh, uh, very uh. live in a fair few months here today. So curious to see how he'll fare. I was going to go back and adjust this morning line and even tighten things up a little bit more. But I said, you know what? They drew the 11 and 12 uh, English B midnight tea time out there. Both made a mate. I could see them mm -hmm. maybe a tick lower. I don't know if I'd take less than 9 to 2 on either one of them. But uh, midnight tea time did not get much play. It was, what, 19 to 1 in the dinner party. Uh, I'm going to certainly take more play today. Had a little yes. trouble. But drawing out there, sometimes those horses are the forgotten horses when they when they get way out there. And, and talking about the flow and his style might be up against it. But I, I'm going to use him. I wish he would have run a little bit better on a yielding course. Did not. That's why I like Logical Myth. Uh, the the other uh, Joe Sharp as mm -hmm. well. I think he's live. And, and he's a horse yeah. that's hampered by some of these trips behind slower paces. But he's shown in the past to lay closer. And, and with a, you know an aggressive rider like J.D. Acosta and that extra run into that first turn, I think he can be able to draft in behind horses and stay pretty close, maybe get covered up and fire home the last quarter of a mile. So, And I think he offers value. This should be a good betting race. I'll be shocked if it he can be exact. Even the two favorites hit, it should pay $30, $35. It I is would a think. terrific yeah. betting race. Very much. Mm -hmm. I use English B as well. Second start after layoff for trainer Gary Motion. Came out of that dinner party. Was under a stronghold the entire time, but couldn't really get out. Joan Rosario mm -hmm. had to try and find the gap on the road. Got in a bit tight, then the gap appeared, but he didn't have the momentum anymore, so the gap 
moved away from him. I, I like English B on that second after a break uh, angle here. But I like the number 8-2 uh, Logical Myth. Came yeah. out of that same race as Pixelate. Two starts back. Back-to-back -back stakes winner at the fairgrounds as we'll get going with the Shine Again stakes. Race number 9-6 furlong the distance. Let's have a look at Chubb Wagon's mm. last effort right here. Dominating the ski pad on a Preakness Day. Yeah, don't let Sweet fool you on the lead. And she's back again. And, and she was going pretty good. 22 and 4, 46. Not blazing, but 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 plenty fast. But the, uh, Chubb Wagon, Ortiz, just, you know, sat, sat the perfect trip down yep. inside, shifted out. And she says, you know what? I, I don't need the lead. I'm going to be able to just show you what kind of talent that I have. She does. It goes by without much effort and is dead firm to the wire. Uh, she's a good one. Chubb wagon. Oh, she's, she's yeah. terrific. And, and how about the pace setup here? It seems a similar setup in terms of the speed here. Hello Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hello Beautiful can rate. I'm not necessarily yeah. saying she's going to go forward, but she's capable of doing so. We know Don't Let Sweet Fool is going to go to the front again. So to me, mm -hmm. it feels like there might be a similar sort of flow for her here mm -hmm. as what she got in the ski pad. Yeah, showing that ability to come from off it. And, you know, Hello Beautiful and Chubb wagon. I think all things being clean and clean break. They are the two fastest horses in this yep. race. I mean, they, they, they consistently run a little bit faster, in my opinion, than everybody else. But, uh, yeah, that opening quarter is going to be very interesting. See the taxes of the five. Somebody, you know, you just do not want to get in some kind of, you know, jackpot mm -hmm. going, to the, to going to the half mile pole where you've got to steady back out of it. You don't want to give up anything like that to the quality horses in here. But this is a good horse race. I think Hello Beautiful is going to be sharp. They've been patient with her. Yep. Would not be surprised if they're aggressive and try to maybe pin Chubb Wagon down inside and put her in a little bit of, mm -hmm. of, of a box early because she's the one that's got to make the decision. Does she want to be caught in between horses early? Because there's not a whole lot you know, separating these fillies through opening quarter times in the yeah. races if as she's well. going to hold her position uh -huh. on the rail and, and stay there. Now, if anyone knows how to race rise, it's Shell, then he'll mm -hmm. definitely come up with a, a game plan, of course, depending on how they break as yep. well. Uh, talk to me quickly about Anna's Bandit. I kind yeah. of put her radio because to me, her career best, mm -hmm. she would even have to do a little bit better to, to win this if some of these fillies line up at their best. And she's been away for 337 days. So I yeah. feel like she's up against it. And I would rather take sort of a wait and see approach. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think the one good thing is, and Jerry Rubin looking at the race, he said, oh, good, let it develop up front. I know I'm going to get some kind of flow yep. to go into. And the horses, you know, you got Luke Ray going to be a deeper closer. She should be able to draft in and save some ground early. Now she's going to maybe find herself a little further back than usual. Uh, but it would not surprise me if she grabbed a piece of this. Uh -uh. Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of went against her just thinking perhaps don't let Sweet fool you if she shows some of the form that she mm -hmm. showed throughout last year. I know that was always on the lead, and that might not happen today, but I'm giving her another chance uh, underneath. Race number 10, the nightcap here, the Stormy Blues stakes five furlong on the main track, and who is more happy with that than the number 10 street lewd mm -hmm. uh, Maryland's uh, champion two-year-old Philly for Jerry Rob Xavier Perez. Uh, she was up against it in the Miss Preakness. That was a tough tough race she perhaps didn't get away that great you can see the comment mm -hmm. as well bumped around at the start it was kind of over after that yep. but i heard she came out of it well that's good and you don't want to miss a beat here mm -hmm. i mean at five eighths of a mile with some of these speed horses i think prodigy dollars live malibu beauty and she's getting along perfect with sheldon mm -hmm. russell the connections got what they wanted uh she's showing the ability to kind of go to the leader just off i think she's gonna have to come from a few lengths out of in here i don't know if she's quite as quick a few of these early, but uh, deadly form right now. She's probably, you know, her, her and Streetly, they'll be breathing down the necks of the speed turning for home. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this mm -hmm. race, actually. I used catching in the wind uh, on the rails, or Kale Kathleen Damasi, J.D. Acosta, yeah. did outbreak the field, but rushed up strongly and never looked back. And if you look back at the fillies that ran behind her, on this Harvest mm -hmm. Moon, came back to win a maiden special weight at Park 65 buyer. And then Empress Diona came back to win mm -hmm. at Penn, a 72 buyer by nine and a half lengths in a maiden special. Now, those aren't the toughest fields. I know that. Mm -hmm. But it franked the four and catching the wind comfortably besting that field. I'm taking a little shot with her there uh, underneath. But you use uh, the number seven Prodigy Doll, who... I see perhaps being engaged with a bit of mm -hmm. a, a pace duel in here. So, hence, I, I wasn't sure if it was going to work out. Yeah. I mean, uh, the race at, at Mahoning Valley, I don't know what you make of the field, was dominated there. But a couple, the, go back a couple of races at Laurel. That race was kind of eye-catching to me. Major excuse in last. Uh, I, I think she can press and stay around against this group. But that's a good pickup on the one. I did not get a chance to watch the video of catching the win. So, just showing that ability after that slower mm -hmm. start. So, if she breaks clean today, it's a big number in debut. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, that's what I 77 buyer mm -hmm. had a break uh, over two months to get over that terrific effort first time mm -hmm. out. Uh, I like JD Cosmo. He's going to bounce her out the gates. Yes. He's going to put her right into it. Uh, I, I'm taking a shot here. So that will do it for us uh, with the handicapping part of things. So let's move on to lightning round. <laughs> I can't help but keep returning to this race. Mm -hmm. To me, this is a terrific clash of talented fillies and mares returning. There's just so many storylines in here, aren't there? Oh, it's, uh, tons of storylines. I think, I think you know, Chubb Wagon obviously undefeated. Hello, beautiful, looking to bounce back. The Lasix is back on. I just remember, you know, the last time, you know, she yeah. ran and afterwards, Brittany said, hey, we're not running her back over there with that Lasix. And, and given the, the time with that, I don't know how it affected her, but given given the time, the patience that they've you know they've taken with her, I think she's going to bounce back in a big, big way uh, this afternoon. But uh, yeah, they're the kind of two right next to each other. I like that. Yeah, and uh, we have five stakes races on tap, but our sister track, Santa Anita Park, has got some stakes action too, including the grade three affirmed stakes for the three-year-olds, a mile and 16, two turns there. I ended up landing on the number three, the chosen mm -hmm. Ron. Uh, Eric Krulczak trains, uh, Umberto Rispoli rides, is stretching out for the first time. Did you like anyone in here? Uh, nothing in particular. I'm interested a little bit on the return of the Baffert horse, I think, ran back what, in, in the juvenile. Mm -hmm. uh, Class year, yeah, number see, one. Yeah, see how that works comes back in return but yeah i didn't get a chance to really dig deep into that one i had a we wedding had, had, had a wedding going. last night yeah I, I, had to, I had that and you know handicapping it was tough to, to get it all covered yeah we had enough going on here and mm -hmm. last friday we did get a visit visit excuse me of uh, some very talented uh, students right here in the maryland thoroughbred career program visited us and i got the chance to speak with them for a little bit they got the chance to meet uh, our ceo sal sinatra as well as steve Kutch. and uh, this was just a wonderful opportunity for them to listen about all the opportunities that are uh, on the maryland circuit and in general in mm -hmm. horse racing so wow i highly encourage this and it was so much fun to have them over yeah and if they ever want to come up and talk to the degenerates up in the press box and and we'll help them you know how to work that self-serve machine and help the handle and keep our jobs. That's that's perfect. But no, <laughs> glad to have the young ones out. Everybody there learning a little bit about the the Maryland racing. It's uh yeah. But we got we got to have them bet. You know we we we, we got to promote we'll that. Get them yeah. betting. There's don't no worry. betting. We don't have a job, right? We'll we'll put the the two dollar win ticket okay. in for them. Good. Don't worry. And of course, a bit of a bittersweet week this week as uh, uh. our esteemed colleague and. Uh, head of the Maryland mm -hmm. Jockey Club, Sal Sinatra, is heading into his last week with us before taking over the reins at Equibase as the president there. Yeah, I think he's going to do a great job as I work for Equibase as well. And Bill Braswell upstairs and Sal, he's he's been great to me. Nothing but good things to say about Sal. I appreciate everything. He's been very supportive of me through my through my years and our in our whole relationship. I think he's going to bring. He's very innovative. He's got good ideas and he's mm -hmm. going to bring them to the table and certainly some things that are going to enhance our products that we put out with, with Equibase, and, and, and the betters are going to appreciate that. Yeah, so he's been with us mm -hmm. since uh, 2014. It makes it about, what, six and a half, seven yeah. years. Uh, to You know, he, he's done so much for the Maryland mm -hmm. Circus. has been an absolute stalwart here. Yep. Uh, I personally wanted to thank Sal because he's been mm -hmm. so welcoming to me throughout my time here. Yep. And to everyone here at the Maryland Jockey Club team, you will be missed. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully he'll have a great last week. And that will do it for us this morning at Today at the Races. Do come and visit Pimlico Race Course. What a beautiful day. Five stakes races, ten races, and that rainbow pick six carryover yeah. starting in race five. You got it. Good luck.